Amen. Good afternoon. Sado yata ng malakas pa the day. Okay, thank you. Shall we all stand, please, and turn your Bibles in the book of Psalm 23? Supposedly, we are going to continue to study our series about the book of Genesis, but I decided to go on this message. And I believe uh, this would be timely, especially on those uh, past events that happened. And uh, hopefully that this message will be a blessing and encourage, uh, encouragement to all of us. Amen? Amen. Uh, everybody knows this verse, and this is very familiar. And I know that some of you here memorize these verses. Psalm 23, verse number 1 to 6. All together, let us read it in unison. Please begin. As some, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you once again, Lord, for your kindness and your faithfulness in our lives. We pray, Lord, that you will help us. Give us the understanding, the joy, Lord, the excitement to listen to your word this afternoon. Thank you so much, Lord God, for those great messages that we heard this morning. Truly, those words are really precious in our lives, Father. And I pray that uh, you will help us, Lord, to grow spiritually and be the one, Lord God, to continually lead us every step of the way. Please help me as well as I will be delivering your word. Please give me the wisdom, the knowledge, Lord, and the authority and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. <coughs> Now, most of us, we don't uh, recognize how hard the labor or the work of a pastor in a particular local church. Sometimes when we hear those uh, messages, uh, messages that can uh, really struck our hearts, we tend to, uh, to argue or tend to uh, disagree with those messages that we've heard. Although we know that those messages will help us to grow by the grace of God. Now, through this message, I hope that it's every one of us will listen very carefully. And we can see here the goodness and the faithfulness of the shepherd. The great shepherd who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, in this verse... This chapter here in Psalm 23, this is a, uh, what they call a, uh, the great shepherd who cares for his sheep and equips them for the ministry. Now, please take a look in the book of uh, Hebrews 4.14, please. In Hebrews 4.14. Now, it says here, uh, Hebrews uh, 13, I'm sorry, Hebrews 13.20-21. It says here, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd, amen, of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in what? In every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Ever, amen. He equips us to be in the ministry, and not only that, He is the one who intercedes with us. Intercession for us in Hebrews 7:25. In Hebrews 7:25, wherefore He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing He ever liveth what to make intercession for. 
them. Now, if you really uh, listen very carefully to the message this morning, now, the message this afternoon is somewhat connected to that message. That's why, you know, every time uh, uh, our pastor and some of the preachers uh, are standing here uh, behind the pulpit, are always taking down notes. And uh, it is really a blessing that uh, when you arrive home, you will uh, read it, amen, and examine through the Word of God. And you know, if you keep on uh, doing that uh, daily, you will uh, get these, uh, what they call uh, thoughts, that uh, the Bible uh, is implying us, and uh, that God has wanted us to have in our lives, amen. And that is really a great blessing. Not only that, certainly this uh, psalm of the message is not only for sorrowing, by the way. Now, we've heard many, many times that this message has been used during a funeral services, am I right? It's being used. But again, this uh, chapter here focuses not only that, on what Jesus does all the days of our life. He focuses all, uh, all the days of our life. And not just at death, but again, God is talking here about what He call our uh, stand in, uh, in His presence. Our uh, status and how, and how we live through Him. Now, as we know, David uh, was a shepherd. Amen? Yeah. He was a shepherd. He tended the sheep of his uh, father who was uh, Jesse. And by the grace of God, by doing that, he learned everything from those uh, uh, work, and later on, he became one of the greatest king in Israel. You know, that is our life. And God will put us first on the uh, 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 lower part of our uh, journeys of life, and then later on, if God will see us that uh, we can be trusted, then God will slowly bring us into what they call highest place, in our highest position in our lives. Now, as we continue here, David deals with some difficult things he experienced here. Because if you're going to study in this chapter, this was uh, probably happened during the time of uh, uh, Absalom, when he uh, rebelled against his father David. So, you know the story, we can see that in 2 Samuel chapter 13 up to uh, chapter 19. Now, David experienced difficult uh, times in his life as he walked with the Lord. But again, through that, we can see that the hand of God was with David. Amen. Amen? God did not forsake David. God guided David until he overcame these difficulties that he experienced in his life. Again, Christians, we have to understand that, that we are fighting many battles every day. And all we have to do is to ask the guidance and the power of God to be with us. Now, all the days of our life. Now, we can see different uh, Bible characters here that were also uh, what they call uh, shepherds. But we're not going to uh, mention them uh, one by one. But again... This uh, chapter really explains us the goodness of God through the days of our life. Amen? Amen? Now, we can see here that sheep are defenseless. We were compared to the sheep. We're what? Defenseless. We cannot protect ourselves. And we need someone a constant as, uh, as uh, I mean somebody who constantly cares for us. You can drive sheep as you uh, do, like what the cattle, uh, like what other people are doing with their cattle. The sheep must be what led. Amen. No, the Eastern shepherds know their sheep by name, and they call them, and they call them by name. You can see that in John ten one to five. In John ten one to five, you can see that the Bible tells us. John chapter 10, verses number 1 to 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief 
and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own what? Sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And verse 4, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of what? Strangers. The sheep were what? Kept not for food, but what? But for wool, milk, and also for what they call reproduction. That's how the sheep is being kept. And in this psalm, David explains that if we follow the Lord and trust Him every day of our lives, He will what? Meet every need that we have. Amen? No matter what the circumstances may be. Now, let us study the faithfulness of the shepherd. Now, here number one, it says here, The Lord, verse one, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse two, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now the Lord is Jehovah God and the covenant-making God of Israel. Covenant-making God. Now, the compound names of Jehovah in the Old Testament reflects to the content in the psalm. Now, we can see here. It says here, I shall not want. Amen? I shall not want. When you say, I shall not want, it means what? This means Jehovah Jireh. It means what? The Lord will always provide. It happened in Genesis chapter 22 verse 14. When, I, when uh, Abraham was about to offer Isaac, but praise the Lord, the God of heaven called him. Amen? And then God said, okay, Abraham, I saw. Now I know that you're faithful to me. Uh, and fasten Isaac. And then when he turned, he saw what? A ram that was caught in a thicket. And he offered it to the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord will provide. Amen. Amen. Another thing here. It says here, verse 2. He leadeth me beside the still waters. It means that is Jehovah Shalom. The Lord our peace. Amen. Take note of this. We can only have peace with God if you are saved. And that's the uh, thing that we can enjoy with, the, with our Lord. We will always have that peace. Another thing here. <coughs> Excuse me. It says here, He restoreth my soul. Okay? He restoreth my soul. It means what? Jehovah Rapha or the Lord who heals. Amen? That is our Lord. And another thing here, it says here in verse 3, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Jehovah Chidkino. Or the Lord of our righteousness. And another thing. Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death. Now you can see here. The Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Amen. In the presence of my enemies. It says here. Thou preparest a table before me, verse 5, in the presence of mine enemies. Jehovah Nisi, or the Lord our banner. These are the compound names of God. And, and lastly, we have here. Thou anointest my head with oil. Jehovah Makadesh, or the Lord who sanctifies. Amen. 
We can see here, it is simply means what? The Lord is my shepherd. Simply means what? The Lord is what? Shepherding us. Guiding us. To lead us and provided food, our daily needs, and provided water. Now, in the uh, uh, Near East, they took care of them when they were weary. Weary. Bruised, cut, or sick. Rescued them when they strayed. And they knew what their names. Assisted in delivering the lambs. And in every way, simply what? Love them. That is how our Lord is doing in our life. Now, during the old times, when you say pastures, the, the pastures, these are what they call, the, these are lush and green, following the rainy season, which is the spring. But these lush and green pastures didn't last long. So what are they doing is that, during the time when they take care of this, what they call sheep, there were no fences. So any other animals could easily attack them anytime. That's why the work of a shepherd is not easy. In leading and guiding the sheep. The same thing as what our pastor is doing in the present. But most of us, we cannot recognize this one. We couldn't recognize recognize this one why we are blinded by those negative things that we can see ahead of us helpless flock needed what they call constant care if he didn't own the sheep as a shepherd he must do his part no matter what Amen. In First Peter one eighteen to nineteen, please. First Peter one eighteen to nineteen. It says here, for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of the Lamb without blemish and without spot and because the father what gave them to him he gave it to the lord jesus christ in john 17 verse 12 that is why the emphasis of this verse here verses number one to three jesus is what our what satisfaction amen is our satisfaction are we satisfied of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we satisfied that we have a Savior? Are we satisfied that He can do everything in our lives? Amen. That's what verses number 1 and uh, one to 3 is telling us here. He is our satisfaction. Hey. Do you believe in that? For every need the sheep may have as they are in the pasture. They need food or they need grass. We are talking about the sheep here. Water. They need rest. And a shepherd who knows where to lead them. So when the uh, people of God follow the shepherd, they have all they need. Amen. They have all they need. This is very clear here in the word of God. And will not what? Lack of this what they call necessities that is very clear here in the word of god psalm 37 verse 25 psalm 27 verse 25 now again number one their satisfaction psalm 37 verse 25 i have been young and now i'm old yet have i not seen the righteous forsaken nor his what? Seed. Begging what? Bread. Why? Because our God can provide if we have the satisfaction in our lives. 
But hey, our problem is this. I want that. I want this. I want that. I want this. And nothing will happen. We are not having those satisfaction in our lives. Because we want more. Although the secret is this. Matthew 6.33. A very familiar verse. It says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is very clear here. And now you are complaining, Oh, bakit malit pa ang sahod ko? Hey, the question is, why don't you ask yourself, are you doing the business of God? Seriously? Yung binibigay ba sa inyo trabaho, ginagawa mo mabuti? Are you a good steward? That's the question. Hey, all these things shall be added unto you. Philippians 4.19. Everybody knows this verse. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See? Christ is our what? Satisfaction. So sheep will not lie down when they are hungry. They will not lie down when they are hungry. Nor they drink from the fast flowing streams. That's why the shepherd sometimes what? This is what the shepherd will be doing. He will what? Temporarily dam a stream in the trough. In the trough. I mean, in a, something like a, a container where the top is open. In order for the sheep... Okay, to be given that water. That's how good our God is. But we don't recognize it. Because we want more, we want more, we want more. To tell you honestly, brothers and sisters in the Lord, um, umiyak ako minsan while praying. I, I'm not saying this because I'm in front of you. Pero sabi ko, Lord, thank you po. Yung mga biyaya na dumarating sa aming buhay, I know. Ito ay, ano ito eh? Binigay lang ng Diyos. Kasi nakita rin siguro ng Diyos na ginagawa naman namin ang part namin bilang kanyang mga anak. Kasi naman, sinabi ko na po sa inyo, ginagaya ko sa Pastor Joel, may sobre din naman ako sa bahay. Yung offering na nilalagay ko na, ito yung offering ko, hindi ko nagagalawin yan. Ito yung pang faith, from, uh, faith, from, faith promise ko, ito yung offering ko, hindi ko ginagalaw yan. Hindi ko ginagalaw yan. Kaya pag dating ng offering na, ibibigay ko yan sa biyaya ng Panginoon. A ako, hindi ako nagbago. Hindi, hindi ko naman sasabing gayahin niyo ako. Pero... <laughs> Simula noon hanggang ngayon, hindi nagbago ang aking pananaw dyan. Bakit? Naniniwala ako kasi ang Diyos naman hindi din nagbago sa kanyang pagtingin sa akin. So, it's all a blessing. Yeah, these are all blessings. Kaya, yeah, tinitinan ko, bakit ako nagkaroon ng ganito? Sabi ko lang, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Kasi, if you are satisfied with God, and then God, and everything is in God, wala ka nang hahanapin pa. Amen. Eh, minsan, hindi pa tayo nahihiya. We're demanding some things, pero hindi natin tinitingnan ay yung ginagawa natin. Karapat dapat pa talaga na makuha natin itong bagay na, ganit, na ganito. Amen? Oh, 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 gusto ko mataas pa ang sweldo ko. Ah, ang tanong, ginagawa mo mabuto yung trabaho? I don't get me wrong. Uh, some of you might get mad at me right now. But this is the reality. If you're satisfied with that work, then do it. Do it. Do it properly. Amen. Hindi ko pa ba nakalimutan nung sabi ni Pastor Joel. Hindi dahil nandito siya. Kahit kami mga preachers, nasabihan niya, paigihan na lang yung trabaho ninyo. God will provide. And that is really true. 
And it is proven. Problema kasi natin, kulang lang tayo sa tiwala eh. Why? We're selfish. We're selfish. Now, it says here, lead, led, in verse 2. Means what? Lead gently. That's how our God is doing, uh, is doing in our lives. He is leading us gently going into the fold. You cannot drive sheep. The sheep hear the shepherd's voice and what? Follow him. Just as we listen to Christ in his word and obey him. Ang kulang lang makasi sa atin, hindi tayo marunong sumunod. Why? Because our nature ay matigas ang ulo. Kaya nga, kung meron tayo makita mga kapatiran na uh, sa biyay ng Panginoon ay pinagpala sila, praise the Lord! Huwag tayong mainggit o magalit man. Kasi kapatiran yan. And later on, pag may pangangailangan ka, matulungan ka nila. Kaso, wala eh. Minsan, I'm not saying all, some. If the sheep goes astray, the shepherd what? Leaves the flock in charge of the helpers uh, and helpers and what? Find the what? Other one who was lost. Ganon ang ginagawa niya. Iniiwanan yung ibang mga sheep. Hanapin lang yung isa. Hindi ka ba natutuwa nun? Hinanap ka na ng Diyos? Natagpuan ka ngayon? Anong gagawin mo? Dapat magpatuloy ka. Huwag ka nang umalis sa kalaoban ng Diyos. Wow. That's why when the sheep start to explore an exciting new path, it will lead him them to what? Trouble. Hebrews 13:9 please. Hebrews 13:9. It says here, "Be not carried about with divers with divers strange doctrines." For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meat, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. It's very clear here. Why we lost? Why? We tend now to what? Entertain those worldly things in our lives. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, take note on this. Kung hindi naman kailangan bilhin, huwag mong bilhin. Minsan, pinipilit natin eh. May, may papasikat lang tayo sa kapokos tiyano. Kakalungkot. Amen. Hindi naman kailangan eh. Ba'y nating... Pero pag kaya mo na, hindi ko naman sinasabing bawal. Gawin mo. Okay. We've been distracted by those things around us. So God cares for us because He loves us and wants us what? To glorify Him. For what? Bible tells us, for His name's sake. Amen? For His name's sake. Not for the sake of people. The shepherd heard our cares for the sheep because He loves them and wants to maintain his own good reputation as a what? Faithful shepherd. So, there's what they call satisfaction. Amen. There's satisfaction. Mas na-enjoy mo yung paglilingkod pag contento ka kung anong meron ka. Pero pag maraming iniisip, so, ang ganda ng sasakyan ni... Ano? Makabili nga. Hindi mo pa naman kaya. Amen? Hey. No. I, I just want to say it's straight, but please don't get mad. And I hope we must be practical of what we're doing. There must be what you call satisfaction. Second, verse 4. Yeah, though I walk through... Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Okay? Thy rod and thy staff, they 
comfort me. There is peace. Amen. And this is the central verse of the psalm. And the personal here uh, instruction to us. David is not speaking about the shepherd, but speaking what? To the shepherd. It says here, Through the valley of the shadow of what? Death. In the dark valley. He is not, Christ is not before us. Our shepherd is not before us, but he is what? Beside us. As we go on in our journey. He is beside us. Leading the way and calming our fears. Now the veil of deep darkness represents what? Our difficult experience of life that makes us afraid. And that, is, and that includes death. But again, if you have Christ, there's nothing for us to fear. There will be peace deep within. Amen? Amen. You know, this is one of the characteristics of the ship. They what? They lack good vision. And they easily get frightened. And some of us are like that. We can easily get frightened. Pag wala na yung hinahanap natin sa buhay. Nalulungkot na tayo ngayon. Hindi natin alam ang gagawin. Lulugbong tayo sa may sulok ngayon. Iiyak na tayo as if walang hope sa ating pong buhay. But again, the Bible clearly teaches us that there is what? Peace in our hearts. Amen? Especially in the dark. So while they are not traveling, the, the work of the shepherd is to what? To calm the what? The sheep. He will calm them. As they go unto that what? Veil darkness. But hey, sa ship po, ang shepherd po, meron po siyang dalawang hawak. Una, yung rod. Okay. Ginagamit na yun, again, to, uh, again, uh, by those uh, wild animals who might be attacking the ship. And can easily kill those uh, wild animals using that rod. And he's also using that what we call staff, the parameric curve. That one is being used by those sheep na matitigas ang ulo. Ginaguide niya habang sila naglalakad. Minsan kasi ang mga, may mga sheep talaga na matitigas ang ulo. Kaya ang ginagawa ng shepherd, kinukuha yan, binabalian yan, pinipilayan. Sa ating buhay, ganun din minsan na nangyayari. Pag nakikinan ng Diyos na parang ang taon to ay uh, di na yata nakikinig sa akin. Then we can experience that what we call chastisement. Amen? But God is always good. God is always good in our lives. At the evening, He would have the sheep pass under the crook one by one. So he could what? Count them and examine them. By knowing this, it gives the, uh, the flock what? Peace. Knowing that the shepherd is with them. Amen? Amen. And equipped for any emergency. In Matthew 1.23, God is with us. Amen? He is the Emmanuel. Jesus is not the hireling who runs away at the side when other wild animals will be going to the ship hold and attack the ship. No, he will not do that. He is not the hireling, but he is a what? A great shepherd. He is a great shepherd. He is a true shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep in John 10, 11 to 15. 
Let us go there, Brother Deo. John 10, 11 to 15. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life, what? For his sheep. He will give his life. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth what? The sheep. But hey, God's sheep have what? Peace with God. There's always peace with God. Ewan ko kung hindi ka nakaranas ng peace, eh, that's a big question sa iyong buhay. Romans 5.1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our what? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have peace with God because the price has been what? Paid in full by the work of what? Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. He did it for us. So God's justice towards us is what? Eternally what? Now, satisfied. There's peace. This is why there's a song. There's a peace in my heart. Amen. Amen. Remember that the Bible doesn't say that we have peace with the devil. The Bible didn't say, doesn't say that we have peace with the world. But what? Not peace with the flesh or peace with what? Sin. Remember that life is still a what? A battle for Christian. But it is no longer a battle against God. Because we have peace with God. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So I hope we have, we can uh, recognize the goodness of God in our lives. So through life, as we follow the shepherd, we will have many varied experiences. Do you believe in that? Some of which will be very trying, but none of them can what? Take the Lord by surprise. Trust Him and have peace. So the closer we are to our shepherd, what? The safer we are and the more peace will fill our hearts. Isaiah 43, 1-3, better day, please. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, burned neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 3, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Ziba for thee. There will always be peace in our hearts. Point number three. We're almost done. Let's go back to our text. Psalm 23. No. In verse 5 Thou preparest a table before me In the presence of mine enemies Thou anointest my head With oil my cup runneth over Praise the Lord Number 1 We have satisfaction Number 2 We have that peace And number 3 We have that guarantee Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Now, when we say table here in verse 5, it doesn't speak about a uh, wood. 
a, a uh, something like a, uh, a furniture m made of a, uh, I mean wood, or uh, where we use uh, every meal at home. Uh, I mean, but when you say uh, table here, these are what they call the uh, flat places in the hilly country, were called tables. So, and sometimes the shepherds stop the flock over there, and what? Before they head to the fold, they will stop there and allow the sheep to what? Eat. And that what they call table. Flat places in the hilly country. So they were allowed to eat and rest as they headed into the fold. So after the difficult days of work, the aim of the shepherd was to bring the flock safely back to its fold. That's his aim. So where the weary sheep could safely rest for the night. Now sometimes at the fold, the shepherd would spread out food in a trough. That's what I'm talking about a while ago. A uh, container, a big uh, container where uh, the top is open and then he will what? Place the water there in order for the sheep to drink and rest in the fold. But again, please take note here. The very important thing that the uh, shepherd is doing. So, as they sleep, they would be protected by a what? Stone wall. Yung sheepfold po, nilalagay po yun ng stone wall. Okay? They use what they call stone walls uh, uh, during the time. And the shepherd himself would, would what? Sleep across the opening and be the door. That's how they do that in John 10, 7 to 9, please. John 10, 7 to 9. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 8, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find what? Pasture. So during the night, this is what the thieves are doing as well. Okay. And dangerous animals might approach the fold, but there was no way. There is no way in, uh, for them to enter in the sheepfold. Why? The protection is there. Amen. There is always guarantee. Amen. That God will always protect us in times of dangers in our lives. Eh, yeah, bakit ka ba natatakot? There's no way they could reach the ship. There's always a lesson here that God will not always remove the dangers in our lives. That is true. Amen? God will not always remove the dangers of our lives, but He does help us what? To what? Overcome them. God helps us to overcome them and not be what? Paralyzed by this fear in our lives. Kasi, Life will not be challenging uh, if there are no troubles that we will experience along the way. There's no challenge. Kaya naging makula ang buhay ng isang tao kasi nagkakaroon siya ng mga itong pagsubok sa kanyang buhay. And then, God will give us what? Strength to overcome these troubles in our lives. That's why this is what it means in Romans 8, 31 to 39. Brother Daya, could you please go there? Romans 8, 31 to 39. I really like this verse. Where, uh, this verse says, What shall we say, uh, then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. 
who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Verse 36, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, amen. In all these things we are what? More than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. And last verse, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And have peace in the midst of danger. There's God and human. Wow. Hindi ba natin marirecognize ang ginagawa ng Diyos sa ating mong buhay? So the shepherd would examine as they entered the fold to be sure none of them was bruised or none of them were injured or sick from eating a poisonous plant. Because to the herds, he applied the what? Soothing oil. He applied that. And for the thirsty, he had what? Large 200 cup filled with water for the thirsty. So he would also apply the oil to the heads or the horns of the sheep to help keep the flies and other insects away. That's how God cares for us. The sheep knew they were safe and they would, could sleep without fear. There is guarantee. Amen. I hope we can recognize the faithfulness of the shepherd in our lives. And lastly, it says here, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eternity. Amen. So as the shepherd lay each night at the door of the shipfold, he looked back over the day and gave thanks to the Lord that blessed him, that blessed them with what? Goodness and mercy. And I believe David, we can, when he can recall the goodness of God prior to those, uh, to those things that happened in his life, I believe David was very, very thankful to God. How God led him and allowed him to become fruitful and victorious in his life. That's why he had been followed by goodness and mercy. So it is equivalent to Romans 8.28, Brother Dayer. Romans 8.28. Let's stay on the line. And what we know, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. He knew everything. He knew that He would be in heaven with the Lord someday. Eternity. Amen. So, in John 14, 6, we can also see here. It says here in John 14, 6, uh, John 14, 1 to 6, Let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Amen. Believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. What? The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I, I hope this thing is very clear with us. I hope that we will recognize the goodness of God in our lives. How he used the man of God to lead us. Mga kapatid, to our uh, kamay brethren, can I speak Filipino? My nose is bleeding now. Pwede bang alisin natin sa ating sarili yung lagi na tayo nagagalit pag tinuturuan tayo? We must be up to teach. Wala nang napakasayang kristyano, mga kapatid, na naglilingkod na bukas ang kanyang puso, handa siyang maturuan at tinatanggap niya pag siya ay mali at inaayos ang kanyang buhay. Ang saya nun, mga kapatid. And we will look back and see only goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Remember, the shepherd died for the sheep. Amen? And we shall meet our shepherd in heaven. In Revelation, uh, Revelation 7.17, we'll end up here. Revelation 7.17. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Malino na sinasabi dito ng Biblia. Magdadoubt pa ba tayo? Iniisip pa ba natin yung mga pansarili natin sa buhay? Yes. We have needs. Pero yung needs, iba po yung sa wants. I hope. Please recognize the heart of the man of God in leading a particular local church. He loves each every one of us. The great shepherd and the under shepherd. Please recognize it. Amen. Amen. No, I'm not saying this because our pastor is here. But we preachers can also feel kung ano may nararamdaman niya. No, standing behind this pulpit is not easy. It's not really easy. You know, sometimes sasabihin niyo, pa-English-English yan, nagpapasikat. No, hindi. May mga mood yan eh. Minsan tayo, busog na busog tayo, pero yung mga locals hindi na bubusog. Amen. So I hope that the relationship between the sheep, uh, the sheep and the shepherd will be strong. Amen. Bigyan ng preacher na yan. Mali-mali pronunciation. 
Let's pray for us. Again, pag mag-pitch dito, pagkatapos para na para kami na boxing ang pagod na pagod ng katawan. Uh, parang ewan ko. But thanks be to God, it's all by His grace why so you can do these things. The faithfulness of the shepherd. Number one, there's satisfaction, there's peace, there's guarantee, and eternity. Thank you and God bless you.